Thomas, can you please introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Thomas Burleson, and I'm the team lead for Angular Material at Google. I'm also the architect and the lead on the Angular Flex Layout Library. Um, I'm also an instructor for ThoughtRAM, where we okay. teach Angular masterclass training around the world. Okay, cool. Um, so, I'm curious, like, what kind of challenges do you see, like, what are some of the top challenges that you see uh, Angular developers encounter while building applications? First, there's the ramp up just to learn Angular and to understand the concepts of how Angular works on a web client and all the different platform tools that you might need to use and the platform components. And you can come to the ng-conf and you can come to a lot of the trainings and you'll get a good sense of how these components can fit together and you can build an application. But then the next step that most developers don't realize is that once they have the application sort of laid out, you know, or the functional parts laid out, they then need to try to create the UI experience that they want. And that UI experience is dependent upon animations usually and uh, component layout, like how it's going to arrange and how it's going to resize as the browser window resizes. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting challenge. So Matthias Niamala, for example, is the architect for animations, Angular animations. And with Angular 4.1, I think we're much closer to providing a really nice, intuitive API for developers to use to animate their user experience. Mm -hmm. And then with Angular Flex Layout, which is a new library that's coming out, we are much closer to allowing developers to very easily lay out their applications um, in intuitive fashions across multiple devices. Uh, what is the library called? The library is called uh, Flex Layout, and it's Flex under Layout. the Angular repository. So it's okay. Angular slash Flex Layout, okay. and developers can actually install it with uh, npm install at Angular slash Flex dash Layout. Okay. And uh, wh why did you create this library? So Flex Layout is actually the second, or maybe even we might call it the third generation of an attempt to solve a really hard problem. So there, there were these concepts of using CSS to apply grids and to lay out components, DOM components, web page components, using CSS to, and to, to create a nice page comp composition. And the problem with that is that it's, it's really hard to do that with floats and everything else. And there came a technology called Flexbox CSS, which does a great job identifying how components should flow on a page, whether they should flow horizontally or they sh the layout should flow vertically. And, and it also identifies how components should resize with respect to each other and with respect to their containers. The issue with that is that Flexbox CSS is actually really hard to learn. So you have two int intimidation levels. One is that if, you're, if developers aren't that comfortable with CSS, first they have to become more comfortable with CSS, and then they have to become an expert with Flexbox CSS. Right. And then they have to become comfortable with all the bugs that are in different browsers, why the, what supposedly should work is not working, and then what hacks and workarounds do they have. We discovered this when we did Angular Material 1, uh, which actually is probably not the correct name anymore. It's, I believe that we're going to be calling it Angular JS Material. So AngularJS is the new name for the 1.x incarnations. And when we created the material library for AngularJS, we had a whole sense of a set of objectives. Theming, so for component-wide colors and font sizes and everything. Creating components that you could use to build comp complex compositions like buttons and drop-down menus and sliders and checkboxes and all these other things. And then we had another th feature that we wanted was we built into there uh, something called the layout engine. And this was really primarily CSS driven. And we did a couple elegant hacks around it. So it looks like it's an Angular directive, which means that when it, um, the Angular compiler would compile it and then transform these HTML markups to actually CSS behind the scene. But the problem with that is that uh, it that layout API was embedded in Angular Material. It wasn't a standalone. And so if you wanted to use it, you had to use Angular Material. And the other, there were other problems, too, with it was that it didn't have a lot of flexibility in how you could set values and how well you could use it, because it's still ultimately mapped to CSS. Mm -hmm. And it required a style sheet of almost 250K. So there were a whole bunch of problems that we, we had to try to address. And then when we started looking at migrating this to Angular, Angular, I almost said <laughs> Angular 2, migrating to Angular, we, we realized, OK, we can not only learn lessons from Angular JS material, we could do several things. We could make it a standalone. 
we could make it high speed. We could have it as a, a zero footprint of CSS that is a, as a separate standalone style sheet. We wouldn't have to worry about what's called CSS specificity, where if you have deep nestings of components in their CSS, sometimes to override that deep, deep components styling, you had to do you had to be very specific in the whole path, the naming yeah. of your CSS override, mm -hmm. and that was problematic. So we wanted to try to address that, and. We came up with, with a very good solution with the new FlexLayer engine. But the really cool thing about it is, is not just the fact that we can use Flexbox CSS to uh, lay out our UI. The new engine has several features on it, I think, that are really nice. Developers don't have to work with CSS anymore. It's just an attribute. So much like you might say, um, I have a button, so you know, angle bracket button and you might say style equals and give it some styles, you can use another attribute, or you, and you could also say a standard attribute is class. Well, now you can say fx layout equals row, or fx layout equals column. And what that says is, hey, for this container, this div container, lay out all the children in a row fashion, or lay them all out in a column fashion, top down. Mm -hmm. And we have other directives as part of the API that are documented. This is it really powerful because now the DOM elements that you're, the HTML markup that you're going to be modifying, the directives are very clear on what those are going to do because they're right next to the, the tags that are being used for the DOM, right? So instead of having to look at the HTML here and then go over here and look at the CSS, we, we sort of brought that back closer to the HTML. And, but under the hood, what we are actually doing is translating that to CSS that it gets injected very quickly. That's just one aspect. The other aspect was this whole idea of uh, responsive layouts, because people will say, oh, Flexbox is responsive. Well, there's a whole bunch of definitions of what we mean by responsive. Res responsive could mean that if I change the size of a window or a container, that its children are going to respond and adjust their sizes also, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that is true. That's responsive, because they're responding. Um, however, there's another thing, that, and, and that's an important aspect, because we do want to be able to have re established relationships between components and their parents and their parents and their parents, and have everything adjust as we want, right? Mm -hmm. When the window shrinks or expands, we want those elements to shrink and expand as needed. Mm -hmm. Some will do more than others. But there's still another thing, too, which is what happens when we design a, us a user experience on a desktop, and it looks great, and now we want to show it on a mobile device. Well, all of a sudden, you, are the, is it just going to scale your, your web page, your desktop web page down and it's really tiny? Or are you going to adjust your layout? Are you going to adapt your layout to the new device size? Right. And so that's one thing also that Flex Layout does, is it has an API that says, hey, if you just tell me the default, use these, well, we'll say directives, right? So a directive looks like an attribute, mm -hmm. but it's smart, it has power. And when it runs, if you can think of it as running, when it runs, it will do things to the element that it's on, right? right? So it, what we call, in Angular, we call that the host, right. the host element. And so what will happen is it, it's smart with standard layout, but we wanted to be able to say, okay, use, for, I'll give you a simple example. Let's say that we have a container, and we want to say lay out all the children in row, left to right. If there's three children, one, two, three, they're just laid out on a desktop application. But if it's in a browser, we want it to be vertical, right? So we want to sort of rotate that experience, so it'll be one, two, three. Mm -hmm. So what we can do in Flex Layout is we can say, we had to identify some way to say on a browser or some other range of sizes, do, do it differently. The configuration is different. And so we have a very, in, very simple API that says, you use the directive FX layout for normal. Mm -hmm. And if it's on a small device size, you use FX layout dot SM for small. And then right there, you specify what, it sh what the value should be. And so in your markup, you can have dot SM, dot XS for super small, MD, um, large. So what we did was we took these little suffixes, SM, X, you know, and we mapped those to specific viewport sizes, ranges. And under the hood, it accounts for all that. The FlexStyle engine listens for these breakpoint, what we call activations of these new ranges. So when you slide your window in from a large to a medium size, the media query engine under the hood says, oh, media query range is now active. And what the Flex, Flex Layout Engine says, hey, if you're using the .md, the medium uh, API, then I'll run that one now. Mm -hmm. 
But if you're not, I'll default to the normal one. All that complexity is handled under the hood for the developers. So there's an incredible amount of power that's going on there. Do you have um, something for hiding an element? Like if you were to hide it for a specific size, can you do that? Yes, in fact, uh, and that's, that's a great question. So we, we first started looking at just doing standard Flexbox stuff, right? Which is essentially identifying flow layout and resizing. However, then we realized, well, if we're going to support responsive features, wouldn't we want to conditionally hide or show elements based on the device size? Mm -hmm. And, and that allows us to adapt our UI. For example, we might not want an add component to show on a mobile. So then we would want to hide it on a small mobile device. And what we have is uh, two directives called FX hide and FX show. And you can use the same suffixes with those, .sm mm -hmm. equals true or false, or you could use an expression, which means that that would be evaluated to a Boolean, is it true or false? And if, if those change at any time, the directive refires and it, it will set display to none or display to something else and it just works great. One of the challenges that I've seen in this kind of responsive interface is that uh, sometimes uh, you want to actually not render the DOM beyond, like, so if, you're, if you have something that is hidden on mobile, you actually don't want that DOM to be rendered on mobile. Do you, do you have an ability to do that uh, with, the, with this library? So the, a good, another great question. Uh, and in fact, you, you, you found the pinhole in some of our current API, right? We're, we're missing something. So we have X, FX hide and we have show. We also have hooks into ng class and style. So you can actually responsively, based on the device size, change your styles too, which is incredibly powerful because you could change colors, anything with CSS, you can actually adjust that based on a new viewport size, dynamically. That's great. Yeah. So it's really powerful, but what we don't have is, a, so we have the way to say, hey, don't show the DOM elements, right? So that means it won't be part of the reflow and all that, which is nice, which means that um, it's as if it's not there, but you, what you have identified is that initially the uh, Angular compiler still compiles it in, still you hit the penalty cost of actually building that component even if you're not showing it, right? right. Typically the way we get around that is we'll use um, like an NGF mm -hmm. template directive yeah. or the ng switch. And right now those directives are not responsive, so they don't support the .sm, right. .md and all that. Um, we're having discussions right now with the uh, uh, Angular core team itself of how do we take this whole idea of responsive engine and what directives, what, what features should support these enhancements, but they're not there yet. Material 2, does it support, uh, are you able to use it with uh, Flex Layout? So Material 2 handcrafted, so they also use Flexbox CSS within their components. Okay. They handcrafted those with um, by using specific Flexbox CSS and not the layout engine. And they did that for two reasons. One, they didn't want an external dependency on Flex layout if developers didn't want to use it. Okay. And second, they wanted a lot more granular control within their components. And so within the, their components, they don't use it. But the recommendation that we have is that uh, you should use Flex Layout to lay out their components. Mm -hmm. Don't try to reach inside of them, but you, you, know, you right. can arrange the composition of their components. Right. Right. And that works really well in general, except for a couple of things. That, and we're coordinating with the uh, material team to identify how we can improve that, that relationship. Mm -hmm. I could give you an example if you want. Yeah, but, sure, that'd be great. So uh, one example is MD Toolbar. MD Toolbar allows you to say, here's some content I want to show in the toolbar, and by default, it lays out left to right. But also what it does is it actually takes the content that you want to show in the toolbar, and it puts a special wrapper around it that is not there originally. So if you try to use Flex Layout with MD Toolbar, it affects its closest children. But there's a wrapper. So you're not affecting the content that you thought you were, you're affecting the wrapper. So that's an example of where we need to figure out how to address those issues. Okay. But it sounds like you were, you guys are talking about it and uh, absolutely, ways absolutely. to solve that. And, um, and they, uh, are people able to, can people start using uh, Flex Layout today? Yes, in fact, a lot, of, a lot of teams within Google are using it. And I get people coming up to me all the time in the community saying they're using it already, they love it. We're in beta seven. And um, Beta 7 has fixed some, some edge case bugs, but important ones, like with NG4. It supports um, what we call a change detection strategy now for on push. 
It much better supports NG class and NG style. Um, I highly recommend developers start using it. And it's super easy to use. You, you just say npm install add angular slash flex layout, and then you import the module, and then you start using the directives. It's that easy, you know, so we, we love it. It doesn't mean it's perfect. We, we, if you look at our issue list, we have maybe 30 issues, uh, and we have some new features we want, but it's usable now. That's great. And uh, are you looking for feedback on, uh, on this library? Uh, is, there, um, is there anything particular that you'd like uh, developers to tell you about the experience of using it? I think some of the important feedback would be what more do they need? Okay. And we're aware of some existing issues with uh, Flex Layout when you want to use it in vertical mode and column mode. A lot of browsers have problems with identifying how to re nested children in column mode. And there's some what you could almost think of as hacks to get around it. Mm. And some developers blame Flex Layout, and it's not really the layout's issue, it's more of the browser and what it has to consider when it calculates resizings. We're trying to make that smarter, right, to, to be more proactive about how we can help developers from that perspective. Mm -hmm. If there's any other features that we're not addressing or um, anything that's a real performance problem, that's the things that we would love to get feedback on. Okay. And uh, what would be the best way to go about providing that feedback? The best way is just to go to the GitHub repository at okay. github.com slash angular slash flex layout. Okay. And then there's issues, report an issue. Um, they can also contact me directly, but I actually prefer they don't. Okay. Just because um, the best way to track it and for the rest of the community to see the issue and how we're handling it is through issues. Okay. There's a Gitter channel. There's um, a Google group that they can go to. And then we have a whole set of wiki pages for our online docs. Okay. That will be changed uh, to, to be blended with the new docs coming out from Angular Material. But that's not, in the interim, they can use the wiki pages. And the great thing about the wiki pages is if there's, the details are confusing or there's not enough, the, uh, the community can help out with that. You know, we would love things like that, right? And, or they can suggest where it's confusing. So, and we, we try to be very um, interactive and, it, and iterate quickly so the community gets exactly what they need. Excellent. Yeah. Um, so th thank you so much for telling us about Flex Layout. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. thank you. Hey there. Are you into reactive programming using JavaScript? Do you have to deal with asynchrony in your web app? Join this dot instructor Ben Lesh to learn all of the ins and outs of RxJS in his hands-on workshop. Available online and in person, go to rxworkshop.com for more details and to book your spot today. Hey there. Do you use Angular? Do you like fun in the sun? And how do you feel about boats? If you're nodding yes, then uh, come join us on NG Cruise to learn more about Angular while on a fabulous Caribbean cruise. Check out ngcruise.com for speaker lineup, workshop details, and to book your spot today.